Sonic 1 was the first video game I ever played, and because of that, I've been a massive fan of the blue blur ever since. Like many others, I played the hell out of Sonic 2 and 3 and Knuckles on my Genesis when I was a kid, and have kept up with the series with every new installment in this illustrious franchise. But unlike his mustachioed plumber rival, Sonic hasn't been able to sustain the quality of the Mario franchise when both delved into the 3D realm in the late 90s. Since Sonic 3 and Knuckles, fans have been longing for Sega to go back to the Hedgehog's roots with a new 2D installment. And while attempts have been made, for better or for worse, no one expected what was to be revealed back in 2016. Sonic Mania. A 32-bit retro aesthetic? Check. Multiple playable characters? Check. A combination of speed and platforming that defined the franchise as a whole? Check. Every box was being marked as Sega showed off more of what was essentially a fan game. In a risky and bold move, Sega entrusted their flagship franchise to a group of dedicated Sonic fans in Christian Whitehead, Head Cannon, and Pagoda West games, and it paid off in the best way possible. Everything in Sonic Mania is executed with the finesse of industry veterans. The level design is a near-perfect blend of speed and platforming that rewards the player for their curiosity of exploration, their platforming skills, and of course, their need for speed. While Sonic Mania shares most of its level aesthetics from previous games, the level designs are far from nostalgic. Each throwback level from Green Hill Zone to Lava Reef Zone is tweaked, remixed, or flat out redesigned to not only offer the player unique level themed gimmicks, but also injects as much fan service as humanly possible. Even though I've been through Green Hill Zone near countless times, the Sonic Mania version felt the most refreshing to date, offering a glimpse into the caverns underneath the Green Hills, with zip lines connecting non-linear level design very reminiscent of the best of Sonic CD's Palm Tree Panic Zone. Chemical Plant's Science Goo offers a unique vertical element the stage only dabbled with in Sonic 2, shooting players upward with blazing speed or acting as a hazard if not interacted with correctly. I could list each reused level's newest additions, but I think you get my point. Sonic Mania isn't just filled with old, worn-out level tropes, though, and the highlight for me and many others are the new stages Mania brings to the table. While they're the minority in the level selection, only containing four new zones, they're some of the most original and interesting stages in a long time. Studiopolis Zone is incredibly creative, frenetic, bombastic, and overall one of the best Sonic levels we've seen in a long time. The TV studio aesthetic combined with some tricky platforming sections to higher roots that amp the speed up to 11 make for one spectacle of a stage. Press Garden Zone has to be my favorite. Upon finding myself in Press Garden, I was immediately taken in by the beautiful sprite work this game boasts. The rich color palette of both Act 1 and 2 make for some gorgeous art. The seemingly random theme of a propaganda printing plant combined with interesting momentum-based gimmicks through Act 1 and 2, on top of some of the best music in the whole game. <laughs> make it the most memorable stage throughout the adventure. Speaking of music, we were truly blessed with this soundtrack. T. Lopes has proven himself to be a worthy successor to the likes of Jun Sunoi, Tatsuki Maede, and even the King of Pop himself, Michael Jackson. This soundtrack is some of the best Sonic music, no, video game music in general you can listen to right now. It's incredible. They're not only great pieces on their own, but their composition matches perfectly with the environments you'll be speeding through. Some standouts have to be the slow jam take on Stardust Speedway Act 1. hard-boiled heavy steam and the Wild Wild West inspired Mirage Saloon Act 2 theme. Needless to say, T. Lopes nailed every aspect of this soundtrack and if he's not asked back for the next Sonic game 2D or 3D, it'll be a shame. So Sonic Mania's levels are expertly crafted both linearly and non-linearly. It's got a cohesive and beautiful art style, and its music is, for lack of a better term, kick-ass. But none of that matters if the gameplay isn't up to par with everything else, and Sonic Mania definitely delivers in that department and then some. Everything from the classic games that made them so special is back, most of which is taken from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Spin dashes, elemental shields, character-specific abilities that lead to alternate pathways in and goodies. It's all here just as it was in the 90s, with some much needed improvements that, in my opinion, elevate Mania above the classic trilogy. First and foremost, Sonic, the blue blur himself, is the best 2D incarnation we've gotten yet. He has the ability to use the elemental shields, which gives him a slight edge over Knuckles and Tails when it comes to movement options. Sonic is also given one of the most game-changing abilities since the spin dash all the way back in Sonic 2, and that's the drop dash. This brilliant inclusion allows Sonic to rev up mid-jump to initiate a spin dash as soon as he comes into contact with the ground. 
around. While it's still unlockable through collecting in-game medals, this new move replaces Sonic's Insta Shield from Sonic 3 & Knuckles. This mechanic is so small, some players might not even end up utilizing its full potential, but I dare say it's ingeniously integrated into Sonic's basic moveset so well, it makes Sonic Mania infinitely better than its predecessors because of it. The drop dash aids so much in keeping your momentum up throughout every level, from awkwardly timed jumps you can course correct mid-air to stringing what should be basic jumps into a flurry of speed boosts all initiated by the player, no dash panels necessary. I use the drop dash so much in Sonic Mania, it's effectively ruined any playthrough I attempt in any of the classics because I end up missing it so much. That's not to say Sonic's the star of the show. Since the release of Sonic Mania Plus on July 17, 2018, players have been able to blast through the game's four additional characters being the aforementioned Knuckles and Tails as well as the long-awaited return of Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. While Knuckles and Tails remain mostly unchanged from the Genesis Origins, offering players different route options as well as more difficult or easier experiences respectively, Mighty and Ray offer a bit of a detour, if you will, from the traditional 2D Sonic experience. Similar to how the Sonic Advance series on the GBA tried to implement established characters into a 2D Sonic game, Mighty and Ray offer a unique way of tackling Sonic Mania's campaign. Mighty has a plethora of abilities, both passive and active, that help players traverse the most dangerous sections of any level. Mighty has the ability to block enemy projectiles while jumping, bouncing off of spikes to avoid losing all his rings, as well as his ground smash move. While his moveset seems to be aimed at making playthroughs a bit easier, Mighty is still a blast to play with, and utilizing his ground smash move in conjunction with the momentum and physics of the game can allow for some pretty skilled moves to keep up the pace. Ray is basically the cape from Super Mario World, allowing players to glide through the air with ease. While some levels weren't designed around his ability specifically, you can still pull off some pretty impressive moves, chaining together a bad nick bounce into a glide to soar over huge gaps of the level, which is particularly useful in time trial mode. It's encouraging to see obscure yet classic Sonic characters being given a new lease on life and really becoming their own characters rather than the palette swap of Sonic, which is a real testament to the development team's level of creativity. I could continue ad nauseum about everything I loved about Sonic Mania, and I think I will. I adore the fan service the team sprinkled throughout the adventure, from Sky Chase's theme being spliced into Mirage Saloon's Act 1 music, Sandopolis Zone's ghost haunting mechanic being reworked into Oil Ocean Act 2, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine being Chemical Plant Act 2's boss, just to name a few. The special stages are the best in the series, taking inspiration from Sonic CD's UFO special stages with Sega Saturn-esque 3D models. The transitions between levels makes the world feel interconnected and oozes with charm. The boss battles are actually memorable, and while not not all of them hit the mark, I'm looking at you Flying Battery Act 2. Most of them stand out as the series best, like the aforementioned Mean Bean Machine boss, or Mirage Shaloon's trio of Bean, Bark, and Fang. As you can probably tell, I adore Sonic Mania. Where Sonic 4 Episode 1, and to a lesser extent Episode 2, tried to recapture the magic of the Genesis games while infusing some new mechanics, Sonic Mania pulls off what was attempted nearly a decade ago with near flawless results. It's the Sonic game many fans have been eagerly waiting for, and it does the series justice, cementing Sonic's legacy as one of the best franchises in gaming. For now, anyways. So those are my thoughts on Sonic Mania. Needless to say, I think I uh, I like this game a lot. One of my favorite games of all time. It, I think it surpassed Sonic 3 and Knuckles for me anyway. As not only the best game in the franchise, but one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, but that's just me. What do you guys think? Do you like Sonic Mania? Do you hate it? Do, does it rely too much on nostalgia? Do you want to see more new zones? Whatever, whatever your opinions are, let me know about it. And with that... Thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you.